See that fender thing coming through? That's a blues sound. People like. And you can get happy with it, see? It ain't going nowhere. It ain't going to fluff out on you. It ain't going to wrinkle up and distort unless you want it. In the days when I couldn't afford an amplifier at all, and we only wished we could have something as, uh, as sophisticated and dynamic as a Fender because one Fender amp could handle all our needs. We, you know, if we had a bass player, uh, we ran the microphone through the amplifier. I had a five-piece singing group, and we, I played the guitar, sang and danced, and the, the amp handled all of it very easily. All the guys who uh, I saw playing Fender amplifiers always had that nice, crispy, uh, instant sound. I think that's the thing that made Fender stick out. It has got an instant sound. I didn't appreciate that till later. I feel a lot of people don't know that I played Fender before. And John Hammond, who discovered everybody, he discovered uh, Billy Holiday, Aretha Franklin, Count Basie. He was now my mentor who, who brought me over to Columbia Records. And he asked me if I would be interested in, in uh, doing an ad for Fender. I said, wow. He said, they're going to give you an amplifier. I said, what? because that was very expensive for us. We weren't making a lot of money in those days. And uh, not only did they give me an amplifier, but they gave me a 12-string guitar. <laughs> so, uh, exciting days. I was in Russia, and I was playing a big party, a lot of people, and we had to rent amps. <clears throat> and naturally, they came Fender amplifiers. I had never seen anything like them, ever. They got different fenders in Russia, you know. <laughs> and uh, But they had somebody had left the overdrive on. And boy, I sounded like uh, Eddie Van Halen. <laughs> I left it alone because I didn't have time to, to play with it. So I left it and I said, I tried to buy that amp. <laughs> I said, man, what kind of amp? A fender? I said, no. Yeah, it was. It was a fender amp. And so when we started talking about amps, that's why I asked if we could have that device left in the amp because a little bit of that under the right circumstance works wonders. When I told your engineers what I wanted, they instantly came up with the first thing that bothered me the most. They said, George, what do you look for in, amp in an amplifier? And they asked, well, what kind of amplifier do you like? And they knew what I had played before. And they said, why do you like that amp? I said, because it reproduces the guitar the way that it's supposed to sound. It does not hype anything. It just makes it louder. And they said, well, we can do this. And they changed the tube in the amplifier. And all of a sudden, I heard Fender from a whole different point of view. So they gave me more headroom, so I could turn the amplifier up to five or six and, and still be close to the amp, and the sound got bigger. And that to me was a revelation. And so this, the fact that they allowed me to, um, to design the uh, cover and the way the amplifier looked, I thought that was outstanding because uh, it's a great privilege. This covering with that sound. I know you can't see the sound right now, but when I put my guitar through this amplifier, it gave me everything I was looking for. Punch, power, tonality. Connecting my name to Fender, it should be something that is that comes from my head and from my experience. And I think we came up with a great look. I love this covering that we have on here. And uh, the way that you've incorporated my uh, logo here, I think that's uh, enough prestige for one guitar player from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. <laughs> Isn't that nice? Take this to the gig and come on back with some money. Thank you.